Live from Channel 7, South Florida's news station. This is Today in Florida. The new decade has begun and thousands from South Florida to New York ring it in in spectacular ways. Good morning, I'm Baron Black and welcome to this special New Year's Day edition of Channel 7 News. And I'm Marianne Murciano. Our top story, South Florida, the nation and the world says goodbye to the 1980s and looks to the 90s. It's been a decade full of events that have touched our lives and the nation didn't let it go out without a bang. In New York, some partiers are just getting home after an exciting night in Times Square. In Fort Lauderdale, South Floridians partied until the wee hours this morning after a spectacular laser show. And in Miami, the biggest parade of the year has children and the children at heart still talking about it. That is, if they are up this morning. <laughs> Those stories and the latest on the Panama situation in just a minute. But first, let's take a look outside, see what the weather's like. And the first day of the new year starts off with some pretty nice weather. 69 degrees in Miami, 67 in Fort Lauderdale. In Kendall, it's 64, 68 in Key West. And West Palm Beach reports 66 degrees. You can expect patchy morning fog with a few scattered showers this afternoon and the highs in the low 80s. This morning, it's the first day of the last decade of the 20th century. Resolutions are being made, and Americans from South Florida to New York are reflecting on the new year and getting ready for today's college football bowl contest. That is, if they lasted the celebrations. And the party didn't stop until the wee hours this morning in the Big Apple. Tens of thousands of people jammed midtown Manhattan to revel in the holiday spirit and sing all Lang Syne. Other cities weren't to be outdone. In Atlanta, a giant foam rubber peach was dropped at a downtown mall. And Houston lit up a giant Texas Lone Star. And Seattle rang in the new year with a lighting of the Space Needle. It was an explosive and jazzy New Year's Eve in Broward. The second annual Light Up Lauderdale party went on until the early morning hours today. More than 30,000 people crowded at the banks of the New River to see top jazz artists and watch a fabulous laser show. To top the night off, a brilliant fireworks display. In Miami, 500,000 people came out for the King Orange Jamboree Parade, and despite the long wait before and after the event, the 80 bands and floats in the 56th annual parade were worth it. Even some of our international visitors say there's nothing like this at home. Channel 7's Jeff Michael was there. The King Orange Jamboree more than lived up to its name, in every way king of collegiate bowl parades. <laughs> Celebrities such as Ann Gillian and Paul Williams gave an enduring wave to an estimated 500,000 fans, all of them cheering the more than 80 bands, floats, clowns, and sounds of 1989's last few hours in Miami. All the world loves a parade, and just about all the world came to the King Orange Jamboree. We have seen the Orange Bowl Parade last year in San Francisco on television, and we thought we want to see it real <laughs> here. So you came all the way to Florida for this? Yeah, right. What do you think so far? Oh, very good, I think. Do they have parades like this in West Germany? No, uh, they haven't. They celebrate the New Year's Eve in the home, because it's very freezing in Germany. <laughs> I'm on vacation, having a lovely time. My sister brought us up to see the parade. It's fantastic. All the way from Australia for the Tasmania. Orange Bowl Parade. Yeah, that's right. What do you think so far? It's wonderful. Really great. But lest we forget, this parade has purpose. It is the festive prelude to the battle for college football's national crown. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Number one, number one, yes. 
Lost in the school spirit, Jeff Michael, Channel 7 News. <laughs> and Jeff says even though traffic was slow after the parade, there were no real problems. The new year brings tragedy here in South Florida as a Dania man dies in a house fire. Officials say it happened at 135 East Dania Beach Boulevard at about 3 o'clock this morning. Broward County Fire Rescue arrived to find the duplex in flames. Investigators say the fire started on a sofa. Police say the unidentified man apparently died of smoke inhalation. An investigation is still underway. The new year has brought serious injury to hundreds in the Philippines. Officials in Manila say almost 1,700 people have been hurt by fireworks and gunshots fired to celebrate the holiday. And that's not all. Officials say at least three fires were started by partiers. Another defendant from the Noriega regime is in South Florida this morning. Government officials say Daniel Miranda was brought to Miami at about 1 this morning. Miranda has been indicted along with Manuel Noriega on drug trafficking charges. He faces five years behind bars and a $10,000 fine. Miranda will appear later today before a federal magistrate to answer those charges. And the disagreement over what to do with General Noriega continues this morning. Panama's new attorney general says he wants the Vatican to hand over Noriega to stand trial for murder. The charges are linked to the executions of 10 officers involved in last October's failed coup. But Panama's new president, Guillermo Andara, says Noriega probably wouldn't receive a fair trial there. However, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Panama says there's no deal for the Vatican Embassy to turn over Noriega. It's been more than a week since Noriega was granted temporary asylum at Panama's Vatican Embassy. <laughs> President and Mrs. Bush spent some of their holiday weekend visiting U.S. soldiers who were wounded in Panama. They stopped by the two Army medical centers in San Antonio, Texas yesterday. Mr. Bush said he has an obligation to the 23 American servicemen killed in Panama. He says any deal that stops short of bringing Noriega to justice wouldn't be fair to anyone involved. Well, after nine tries, the Titan III rocket rang in the new year early with a big bang. The rocket, carrying British and Japanese communication satellites, roared into space last night and gave spectators a dazzling New Year's Eve show. CNN's John Holloman has more. Three, two, one. Ignition, ignition of the solid rocket motors. Here we go. After nine unsuccessful attempts at launch, a Titan III rocket, the most powerful privately owned spaceship in history, lifted off from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Earlier launch attempts were thwarted by bad weather and a computer problem. But controllers say the New Year's Eve attempt went just like clockwork. The $100 million Titan III rocket put on an amazing New Year's Eve fireworks show for thousands in Florida and along the South Atlantic coast. The mission of the Martin Marietta launch team was to put two communication satellites into orbit. And within three hours of the launch, the British Skynet military satellite and the Japan Satellite Communications Company's commercial satellite went into orbit. They'll eventually act as communications relay stations 22,000 miles above the equator. This launch marks the beginning of a trend in the 1990s when all commercial satellites will be launched by privately owned companies rather than the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. John Holloman, CNN reporting. <coughs> Three hours after the launch, officials reported both satellites had been successfully deployed. The Titan III is the second U.S. rocket to enter the commercial market. Baron? San Francisco's bad luck seems to be carrying over into the new year. A gas explosion ripped through a building in the city's financial district yesterday. At least four people received minor injuries. Police say the blast was just one block from the scene of last month's fatal crane collapse. The blast shattered windows at nearby stores, restaurants, and businesses. This morning, investigators still don't know what caused that blast. And a Miami to New York Amtrak train smashed into a truck that was abandoned on the tracks in West Palm Beach. More than 750,000 gallons of diesel fuel spilled onto the tracks. Two hunters abandoned the truck after it became stuck on the tracks, and they realized the train was coming. The two men escaped without injury. State homicide detectives are starting out the new year with a stabbing murder on their hands. Early yesterday, a jogger discovered the body of Aristides LaFont stabbed to death. The 30-year-old Mariel refugee was found along of the road in a quiet residential neighborhood. At first, police believed the man had been killed somewhere else and dumped in the gables. But now detectives say LaFont was killed where he was found. No arrests have been made.
A blind man and his crippled dog are spending the new year back home in Georgia thanks to some off-duty Miami firefighters. Day paramedic John Homolka spotted the pair in a shopping center near Homestead. He found 37-year-old Lonnie Chapman suffering from a thigh infection and his guide dog had been hit by a drunk driver. The firefighters arranged to help, help Chapman get food and a train ride home to Georgia. They've been honored with Day Fire and Rescue's Humanitarian Award for off-duty service. Just ahead on our New Year's Day edition of Channel 7 News, warm weather begins the decade. Tom Burst will have details coming up next. Fishermen aren't reeling over a new Florida law. And the new year brings a jump in Social Security taxes. Do you need money fast? Churchill Mortgage Corporation arranges first or second mortgage loans within 24 hours. That's fast. At Churchill Mortgage, you don't have to worry about credit, income verification, or qualifying. Apply now and make no payments for 90 days. Call Churchill Mortgage Corporation today. In Dade, call 854-3321. In Broward, 462-8588. Or toll-free, 1-800-523-5525. When you sleep on a Waterbed City waterbed, you're going to feel great. No matter what your age, lifestyle, or physical condition, you're going to sleep better than you ever have before. We guarantee it with our exclusive 30-night promise of satisfaction. If you don't sleep better and feel better than you ever have before, we'll refund your money. Your purchase is protected. All you have to do is lay down, relax, and enjoy your new Waterbed City waterbed. Sweet dreams. It was absolutely the worst movie I've ever seen. Ever seen? It's the worst movie ever made. You know the feeling. Well, they never have the latest releases. The frustration. Now choosing a movie, TV show, video, book, or record can be mistake-free. Introducing an exciting new magazine called Entertainment Weekly from the publishers of Time and People. It covers all your entertainment choices in a totally entertaining way. Now that I can use. It's bold, it's fresh, it's opinionated, and it's all in one convenient publication. I love it. We're so sure you'll love it. We'll give you the first four issues absolutely free. It's great. Just call this number. Order now and get the first four issues free, plus a full year of Entertainment Weekly for just 99 cents an issue, nearly half off the cover price. If you're not satisfied, cancel and pay nothing. Find out all about the latest entertainment choices in the most entertaining way possible. Just call this toll-free number. Entertainment Weekly. What's good, what's hot, and what's not. It's almost 8.13. Some sad records have just been set for 1989 at the dawn of a new decade. At least 160 manatees died in Florida waters in 1989, more than ever before. A record has also been set in the number of the endangered marine animals killed by boats. Biologists are bracing for more fatalities this week as some manatees weakened by the recent cold weather died and washed ashore. And now it's time to take a look at our weather, and Tom Burst joins us after a few days out of town where <laughs> you were really cold, weren't you? I left Lincoln, Nebraska in a snowstorm yesterday morning, hopped off the plane here, and it was 81 degrees. Uh, uh, I don't, I, that's, a, that's a mess. I'll, I'll come back down here and thaw out just a little bit for a few days. Let's see what's going on this morning. We've got a couple showers which have popped up. The Middle Keys down into the Lower Keys, down into the Straits here around Grassy Key and just north of Marathon. Everything moving northeasterly this morning. We've also got some fog throughout the Keys, a little patchy fog throughout the south end of the peninsula this morning. Let's take a look and see what the numbers look like. We are looking at 64 degrees Kindle right now, 69 Miami, 67 uh, Fort Lauderdale, Key West at 68. Fog advisory is in effect for the the lower and middle keys until 10 o'clock this morning. And again, we are all looking at a little patchy fog uh, this morning, mainly inland. 67 West Palm, likewise sunrise, 72 on the beach. Our winds are out of the south at 5, barometer rising 30, 11, humidity 97 percent, surf temperature at 71 degrees. We have a front coming down right now. It's up in the panhandle. Should move through the state rather quickly today. You can see the showers and storms in the Gulf up ahead of it, and they're moving into the peninsula now. We're just seeing a couple scattered showers popping up here at the moment. We are going to see the chance of a shower popping up throughout the afternoon today and continuing into tomorrow. That front's going to stall out just south of the lower keys here, 
and it'll be that way again into tomorrow. We've got the Orange Bowl going on tonight. We are looking at a slight chance of a shower and temperatures in the lower 70s at kickoff time tonight. And, of course, the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans is being played in the Superdome, so uh, we're going to have to work something up unique for them as far as the forecast is concerned, I guess. We're looking right now at a few scattered snow showers and light snow across the Ohio Valley into the New England. That's an area of low pressure, which is pushing out. Here's the front coming down now. It's going to zip through the state today, replaced by high pressure. Out to the west, we've got some thick fog around the L.A. area, a couple showers off the northern California and Oregon coast, and a storm system right through here kicking off an occasional snow shower or two. For tomorrow, not much going on. A lot of sunshine, high pressure building in behind the front. That front should be sitting just south of the lower keys tomorrow. Our forecast today, we are looking for patchy morning fog, a partly cloudy day, slight chance of an afternoon shower. Look for the low 80s for a high today. Had 81 yesterday. For tonight, increasing clouds, low 60s overnight. And for tomorrow, mostly cloudy, slight chance of a shower and mid-70s. For the boaters today, look for southwest winds at 15 knots. Seas building to 3 to 5. There will be a light chop out there. High tide will come today at 1053 low tide 218 this afternoon sunrise 708 and sunset at 541 so it looks like another good day today after a good one yesterday and it's kind of strange when you get on, uh, get on a plane and it's snowing very heavily and uh, three hours later get off and it's 81 degrees Marion well it gives you a chance to melt it all away thank you very much Tom Baron Florida fishermen are casting a frown this morning because of a new law. Beginning today, recreational saltwater fishing requires a license. The annual cost is $12 for Florida residents and $30 for those out of state. Now, those under 16 and over 65 are exempt. And Florida residents fishing from shore or pier won't have to buy a license. State officials hope the extra money will raise $6 million for fisheries and marine research. The 1990s will likely bring many changes in the U.S., but some are taking effect immediately. Today, a batch of new federal laws go into effect. CNN's Eugenia Hosley reports on how they may affect you financially. New Year's Eve revelers may sober up when they see their next paycheck. Starting the first week of January, the Social Security tax rate climbs more than a tenth of a percent, from 7.51% to 7.65%. That will shrink some workers' annual pay by more than $300. But people on Social Security may find the government's New Year's greetings more to their liking. Their checks will be fatter by 4.7%. Average monthly benefits will rise from $541 to $566. Senior citizens may also end up with more money in their pockets soon because of lower premiums for coverage of doctor's bills. They'll no longer have to pay for catastrophic illness insurance since Congress repealed that coverage after some of the elderly howled about the cost. But they'll also lose some hospitalization, skilled nursing, and hospice benefits. The new year will bring other cutbacks, particularly in the defense establishment. Eighty-six military bases are to be closed over a period of five years. And it was a start at defense savings long before any of the momentous events of 1989 uh, in Eastern Europe. So, and in changes in the Warsaw Pact NATO confrontation with each other. So it was a good start. Some believe the U.S. and Soviets are also off to a good start. A pact designed to reduce the chances of an accidental clash between the two superpowers goes into effect New Year's Day. And finally, the new year will usher in further change in Panama. Under a treaty signed more than a decade ago, 1990 is the year the U.S. Administrator of the Panama Canal is to step down and turn over day-to-day -day control to a Panamanian. Eugenia Halsey for CNN, Washington. And once again, those laws go into effect today. Baron? Someone in Miami began the new decade $12 million richer this morning. The lucky lotto player picked all six numbers in this weekend's jackpot. Just in case the holiday festivities caused you to miss Saturday's winning drawing, here the numbers are again, 2, 5, 10, 25, 42, and 43. That puts this year's first 1990 prize back at $6 million. Hmm. And I can tell you it wasn't me. No, no. <laughs> Even I though I play. bought a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> well, coming up next on Channel 7, a celebration of freedom turns into tragedy in Germany. And Romanians crack the whip for the new year. Johnny Depp, a past love, a deadly triangle. Drop that! 21 Jump Street, then 
the Los Angeles Daily News says, grab some sour milk and get ready for Alien Nation. I'm your father. No matter where you're from, it's tough to be a parent. And the answers are not in this Mr. Spock book. It's Dr. Spock. Mr. Spock's one of you guys. Alien Nation, right after 21 Jump Street, tonight. If you took the best home fashions from Macy's, Birdines, and Modern Age, that's the kind of holiday clearance savings you'll find all day New Year's Day at Feller's. Save up to 70% on furniture, gifts, housewares, and more. Holiday clearance savings all day New Year's Day at Feller's on Powerline Road and the all-new Feller's on University Drive in Davie. Everything imaginable for your home. Open New Year's Day. How much money does the average business spend on office supplies every year? $1,200 an employee. With 10 employees, that's $12,000 a year. But there is a way you can cut your expenses in half. Office Depot. The guaranteed lowest prices on the largest selection of office supplies. Like the 1990 desk calendar refill by success. Office Depot. Office Depot saves you more. How can you tell when you need help with a troubled child? Look for warning signs, like uncontrollable hyperactivity, fits of anger and violence, aggression, overwhelming sadness, problems at school. If you think your child is in trouble, Charter can help. We offer real solutions to your family's problems. Call Charter Hospital of Miami. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. What began as a New Year's celebration at the Berlin Wall has ended in tragedy. East German officials say one man was killed and scores injured when a projection screen fell on a crowd. But despite the tragedy, Germans from both sides of the wall still managed to ring in the New Year together. Now, that's something that hasn't been done for years. There was dancing on top of the wall while the crowd below was sprayed with champagne. It's already well into the new year in Romania, and that's one country that has plenty to celebrate this morning. People were spilling into the streets after word came out that after 45 years, the Communist Party is dead. Officials say multi-party elections will be held in April. Another thing Romanians won't be seeing anymore is the death penalty. It, too, has been officially abolished. Marianne? Well, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev rang in the new year by promising Soviet solidarity. Speaking in his annual New Year's television address, Mr. Gorbachev took a look back at 1989. He says social and economic unrest have made some people bitter against the government, but he believes socialism and democracy can work together as one. Gorbachev says the coming decade can be the most fruitful period ever in the history of the world. The Soviets also received a message of good tidings from President Bush. He sent a televised message calling on both countries to look forward to a new century of peace and freedom. A similar message by Gorbachev is expected to be aired on U.S. television. The New Year's tradition was started by Gorbachev and former President Reagan. The time now is 8.23. Just ahead, TV host Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak rings in the new year by putting a ring on the finger of his fiancée. And we'll show you the top movies on the silver screen. Don't go away. I'll never forget that morning. All I could think of was to reach Mr. Thomas's bake shop for one of his hot muffins with nooks and crannies and butter and still make it to school before the switch. But that day, I would have had to pedal farther than ever before. Mr. Thomas had taken his muffins to America. Thomas's English muffins. For over a hundred years, England's breakfast tradition in America's hands. If you love to surround yourself in beauty, you belong in the world of Estee Lauder. Visit your Estee Lauder beauty advisor and with your choice of 1250 or more, we'll treat you to this gift, including luscious cream mascara and a lipstick. Estee Lauder, live in our world. This gift is yours through January 6th at Lord & Taylor. 
It's a celebration of savings at Macy's New Year's Sale. Savings for her, for him, and Macy Kids. Plus, great values throughout the store. Start your new year off right with 20 to 50% savings for you, your home, and family. Macy's New Year's Sale is going on now. Macy's, we're a part of your life. Intimate weddings with 50 guests to a sit-down dinner for 1400 The Waterford Banquet Center at Crystal Lake Country Club is always a command performance. Eight twenty-five right now in People News this year. Talk and game show host Pat Sajak is on his honeymoon this morning after a wedding on New Year's Eve. Sajak celebrated the new year by tying the knot with former Playboy model Leslie Brown in an Annapolis, Maryland church. Information about the New Year's Eve ceremony is sketchy because the couple sold exclusive rights to People magazine. And former Philippine First Lady Imelda Marcos isn't looking forward to the new year. She's scheduled for a March trial in New York on charges of stealing millions of dollars from her homeland. Marcos says she's innocent and worried she won't get a fair shake. The former First Lady says differences between the U.S. and her country will affect her trial. Critics, by definition, tend to be critical, and film critics have spent much of 1989 saying plenty of mean things about movies. But as the new year begins, CNN's film critic Carol Bucklin is switching gears and offering a list of the year's ten best. When Harry Met Sally is a very contemporary love story. Rob Reiner's direction is stylish, Nora Ephron's script is smart, and title role performances from Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan are terrific. You know, you may be the first attractive woman I have not wanted to sleep with in my entire life. That's wonderful, Harry. The games men and women play are brilliantly analyzed in sex, lies, and videotape. Written and directed with astonishing assurance by newcomer Steven Soderbergh, this is an original, extremely adult picture. Roger and Me is hard-hitting, yet side-splitting. It chronicles the tough times that struck Flint, Michigan, after General Motors closed some of its plants there. It also follows filmmaker Michael Moore as he tries to find GM chairman Roger Smith. We're going to have to ask you to leave the club. Do you want me to call Roger Smith? The Little Mermaid is a Disney dazzler. It enchants the eye, hugs the heart, and showcases the best movie score of the year. Under the sea, under the sea. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Glory offers a sweeping story about a troop of black soldiers who battled on the Union side during the Civil War. It tells a tale of patriotism and prejudice, of bravery and bloodletting. The acting is impeccable, and the on-screen images are indelible. Field of Dreams is a lovely, lyrical film. It's a heartfelt tribute to those who believe in the power of the human spirit. It has an all-American aura, but touches on some universal truths. Hey, is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. Driving Miss Daisy examines the evolving relationship between a white southern lady and her black chauffeur. It's heartwarming and humorous, and it offers a pair of absolutely perfect performances from Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman. Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing is movie making at its most powerful and provocative. This is a fierce yet often funny look at racism in America. It's on screen dynamite. What I tell you about that noise? What I tell you about them you the man. Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors is a work of great artistic maturity. It's a moving meditation on right and wrong, good and evil. It provokes laughter and tears. And finally, Born on the Fourth of July is a brutal, brilliant drama from director Oliver Stone. It's powered by an award-caliber performance by Tom Cruise. Angry and anguished, this film tells the true life story of an all-American boy who went to Vietnam and came home to fight against the war that left him permanently wounded. With the best movies of 1989, Carol Buckland, CNN.
Which of these have you seen? Well, I saw, I saw Field of Dreams, but that's about right. the only one I've seen. Have you seen any? You've got one over me now. <laughs> we'll have to make yes. it a month of going to the movies. <laughs> Still to come on this special New Year's edition of Channel 7 News, she's in the center of a weird baby swap case, but this morning she's forgetting the past and looking towards the future. And New York gets its first black mayor. When the person who doctors the family gets a cough and cold, everyone suffers. Mom, someone took my sleeve. I earned it myself. Time to doctor that cough with Robitussin, because more doctors and pharmacists recommend Robitussin than any other cough medicine. Look, Mom's feeling better. Uh-oh. Robitussin, recommended by Dr. Mom. Which Robitussin is right for you? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Save on Robitussin and help your favorite store help hospitals for children. If your nights are getting later and later, chances are the sag of your mattress is getting deeper and deeper. You need a beauty rest. Its unique individually wrapped coils are pre-compressed to give you a comfortable mattress that stays forever firm. Sleep on a beauty rest and hear something you haven't heard in years. Good night, hon. Beauty rest by Simmons. Forever firm. <laughs> People just don't understand. Constipation can really tie you down. They say, take a laxative and hope it doesn't go to work on the way to the ball game. Oh. Then I found a simple solution. Daily fiber therapy with Metamucil. It's safe, not a harsh chemical. I can even take Metamucil daily for the extra fiber I need to get regular and stay that way. That's important to me and a lot of little people. Metamucil, and you can stay regular for the rest of your life. Football gave me great memory and some painful knees. I remember those smelly old-fashioned liniments, but time and training methods have changed. Today's trainers use Flexol 454, the aloe vera-based pain-relieving gel used by trainers in all major pro sports. And now Flexol is available to the rest of us who live with pain. I might just ask for my old job back. Flexol 454, it's a winner. You're watching Today in Florida on WSVN Channel 7. Good morning and welcome back to this special edition of Today in Florida. I'm Marianne Murciano. And I'm Baron Black. Our top story is this Monday morning. A child who is the victim of a baby swap is making New Year's resolutions. A gruesome murder in a South Florida neighborhood has residents looking for answers. And the King Orange Jamboree kicks in the new year with plenty of sights and sounds. We'll have more on those stories in a minute, but first let's take a look at our weather conditions this first day of the year. 69 in Miami, no report on the beach, 67 in Fort Lauderdale, Kendall reporting 64, 68 in Key West, 66 in West Palm Beach. Here's what you can look for, patchy fog this morning with a few scattered showers this afternoon. Highs will be in the low 80s. A Sarasota girl is doing her best to get through this holiday season after learning some bad news. Officials say 11-year-old Kimberly Mays and another girl were switched at birth. Recent genetic tests show Kimberly is really the biological daughter of another Florida couple. Kimberly was raised by Robert Mays, and the two spent the holidays with her grandmother in Sarasota. Her father says Kimberly fared the holiday well. He says not a whole lot gets between Santa Claus and a child. Police are using the new year to investigate a murder that left a quiet Coral Gables neighborhood in shock. It happened early yesterday morning. Two joggers found the stabbed body of Aristides LaFance on the street. At first, they thought he may have been a drunk, but police later discovered the 30-year-old man was dead. An investigation is still underway. Some good news this New Year's morning. Dade firefighters say a half dozen brush fires are under control. The large brush fires have consumed 300 acres in the north end of the county, all west of the turnpike. Forestry officials suspect arson is the blame. Arson is also suspected in brush fires last week near Chrome Avenue, which claimed 400 acres in South Dade. And two firefighters are recovering this New Year's morning from injuries they received fighting a fire at a used car lot. The blaze started early yesterday morning and burned for a half hour before it was brought under control. Investigators are looking into the cause of that fire.
Well, as the dawn of a new decade comes of age, New York City begins a new era in its mayoral history. This morning, David Dinkins was sworn in as New York City's first black mayor. He became the city's 106th mayor just minutes after midnight in a brief ceremony. On hand for the festivities, South African Bishop Desmond Tutu and the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Dinkins vows to unite New York's ethnic communities. Thousands of New Yorkers are probably just getting in this morning after a huge celebration in Times Square. They gathered in New York's Times Square to watch the annual six-foot illuminated ball glide down a 77-foot flagpole atop Times Tower. A fireworks show lit up the sky over the East River as New Yorkers welcomed in 1990. Fort Lauderdale's second annual Light Up Lauderdale party has ended in rave reviews this morning. More than 30,000 people crowded onto the banks of the New River, getting an opportunity to see a, and hear top jazz artists. And they saw a fabulous laser show, and topping off a great evening, a brilliant fireworks display. Miami's King Orange is reigning supreme this morning after last night's successful stroll down Biscayne Boulevard. More than 500,000 fans came from all over the world to see some 80 bands, floats, clowns, and sounds of Miami. Celebrities, including actress Ann Gillian and Paul Williams, shined on shimmering floats. Sounds like a good time. They had a good time. I saw it on television last night. We were sleeping, though. Yeah. Or I was sleeping. I don't know about you. 24 minutes before 9 o'clock right now. And still to come, Tom Burr says cooler weather is on the way. His holiday weather forecast is coming up next. 10 is a charm for this Titan rocket. And we'll show you this spectacular nighttime New Year's Eve launch. And an oil spill that's being called worse than the Exxon Valdez spill. Sex is America's religion. They are the perfect weapons. But she must be absolutely stunning. Spies trained to be Americans. They're going to live like Americans 24 hours a day. They're taught to seduce. Remove your clothing. And trained to kill. Now, one of them must choose between her mission... Do you love me? ...and the man she loves. Yes. Sally Kellerman, James Franciscus, and Linda Hamilton in Secret Weapons. Tuesday on the WSBN 7 Movie at 8. Tough. Ranger. Save. Value. Ranger. Save at your South Florida Ford dealer now. I'm having a great birthday. Yeah? Are you hungry yet? Yeah. You know, seafood would be nice. Seafood? Lobster's my favorite. I think it's out of season. Steak would be good, too. I, I think steak's out of season, too. Now at Sizzler, get steak and lobster without getting pinched. So, what can I get you now? Diamond earrings would be nice. Uh, definitely out of season. Sizzler. Before you buy your next lamp or light fixture, come to South Dade Lighting, where you'll find all the latest innovations and designs. Create magical effects and illusions in our nighttime simulation room. Add warmth, charm, and beauty to your home with our large selection of unique accessories. And South Dade Lighting's friendly, professional salespeople will help you with all of your lighting needs. South Dade Lighting, state-of-the-art showroom, 13006 Southwest 87th Avenue. Thirty-eight minutes after eight o'clock right now, the tenth try is a charm as the Titan III rocket roars into the new year with a successful launch, finally. The 155-foot-tall booster blasted from its launch pad a little after seven o'clock last night, giving spectators a dazzling New Year's Eve show. Nine previous attempts to launch the rocket failed as everything from the weather to technical problems created delays. And this morning, officials report both satellites on board have been successfully deployed. 
And what kind of weather did Mother Nature usher in this New Year's Day? Let's go to Tom Burson and find out. Tom. Well, I've got a couple of showers which are popping up this morning. Of course, the big weather news for 1989 was uh, just missing Hurricane Hugo, but then it went up there and hit the South Carolina coast. That was, I guess, the big weather news of the year. A couple showers in the middle and lower keys right here down into the Straits. And as you can see, they're kind of lined up there. They are drifting northerly at about 10 miles an hour. Temperatures out there right now, 64 degrees Kendall, 69 Miami, 68 degrees Fort Lauderdale, 69 at Key West, where we also have a fog advisory out for the middle and lower keys this morning as we kind of snooze on into 1990, it looks like. Temperatures. Let's go to the weather computer, see what we've got going on. And uh, there we go, that fog advisory for the lower and middle keys for the... Uh, Area around Key um, West Palm, rather, 67 degrees right now, 68 sunrise, 72 on the beach. Our uh, surf temperature is at 71. Humidity clear up at 100%. We do have some patchy fog in the area this morning. We have southwesterly winds and a rising barometer at 3013. This morning, we do have a cool front coming down right now, stretching just over Jacksonville, almost to Tampa, not quite. Some showers, thunderstorms heading uh, up ahead of it out of the Gulf, moving into the peninsula right now. We have a couple showers here in the Keys. That's about the extent of it. It's going to slide right on through here today and tonight, and as it does that, we'll keep a slight chance of a shower in the Orange Bowl forecast for tonight with temperatures in the lower 70s. For the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, it's not going to be that great outside, but of course they're playing inside, so I guess it doesn't make much difference. Things are going to be looking pretty good. A cold, cold front again heading into the state right now. Some uh, snow showers up to the north, some out to the west here. Some very thick fog across the uh, western coast right now. High pressure will be over us tomorrow, so things are looking good. That front's going to be down in the straits and holding stationary. So again, by midday today, here comes the front, a couple showers along it. Tomorrow it'll be in the straits, a lingering shower behind it, and that's about it. And very quickly, choppy tomorrow for the borders, choppy also in the Keys. Look for east northeast winds at 20 in the Keys, seas 5 to 8, higher in the Gulf Stream, and seas 4 to 6 here tomorrow, higher in the Gulf Stream also. Here's our forecast today. Look for some patchy morning fog. Slight chance of an afternoon shower along with a partly cloudy day. Temperatures in the lower 80s. Tonight, look for increasing clouds, low 60s. That's the front coming through. And mostly cloudy, slight chance of a shower for the south end of the state in the Keys tomorrow and mid-70s. For the boaters today, southwest winds 15 knots, seas building to 3 to 5 in the light shop. Again, becoming choppy tomorrow. High tide at 10.53. Sunset time tonight at 5.41. So the uh, weather's going to be going downhill a little bit, but not for very long. The five-day forecast coming up soon. Thank you so much, Tom. Marianne? Baron Morocco is asking for international help to control a huge oil spill off the African coast. An explosion aboard an Iranian tanker in December spilled 37 million gallons of oil into the water. This morning, the slick is just 17 miles from the African coast and getting closer. French marine scientist Jacques Cousteau criticized the slow public response to the disaster. The slick rivals last spring's Exxon Valdez spill, which devastated the Alaskan coastline. And a special report on offshore oil drilling to President Bush could shape the future of Florida's coastline in the new decade and beyond. A special task force will release its findings tomorrow on environmental concerns <laughs> in proposed oil drilling areas. The report will help the president decide whether to buy out the exploration leases off Florida's coast or to keep leasing them. 1989 will certainly be a year to forget for residents of San Francisco. At least four people were injured when a gas explosion tore through a building in the city's financial district yesterday. The blast shattered windows in nearby restaurants, shops, and office buildings. Last month, just a block away, a crane fell from a high-rise and killed five people. And the city is still recovering from October's big quake. The cause of today's blast is not known. 43 minutes after 8 o'clock right now. Coming up next, South Florida officials begin the new year with another big arrest in Panama. Meantime, Manuel Noriega may soon be out of the Vatican Embassy. And eight American hostages spend another new year in captivity. In a moment, I'll tell you how to get this terrific video cassette free. In the past three decades, you've traveled far and witnessed truly remarkable events. Tranquility base here. The angle has landed. Many of these events you'll never forget, and others you still don't believe. Well, I'm not a crook. And now, from Life magazine, the unforgettable people and events of those years are captured in an exceptional video cassette, Life Looks Back. And it's yours free from life. With Life Looks Back, in a memorable 30 minutes, you'll travel through the turbulent times to the good times. <laughs> 
you remember the dream. And we as a people will get to the promised land. You'll attend the big weddings and sing along with the whole world. You know love is all we need. All the astonishing events of the past quarter century are here in Life Looks Back. I like it. And by calling this number now, you'll get this unforgettable look at life free. You'll also save almost 20% off the cover price of Life magazine, the magazine that always has been and always will be the pages people turn to for an unforgettable look at life. You'll get 13 big, beautiful issues, payable in four monthly installments of only $7.97 each. Plus, your subscription will include this exciting collector's issue, The Year in Pictures. Call now and enjoy life at its best. Life as it is today, brighter and bolder, full of color and excitement, with the memorable photos and inspiring stories you expect from life. So call this number now. Hi, I'm Karen, one of the operators here at Life. Call now and I'll send you 13 exciting issues of Life, including your special issue, The Year in Pictures, at a savings of almost 20% off the cover price. Plus the Life Looks Back video cassette, free with your paid subscription. This offer won't last long, so call right now. It's a quarter to nine right now. U.S. officials have a New Year's present. Another top aide to Panama's Manuel Noriega is in custody right here in South Florida. Government officials tell Channel 7 Daniel Miranda was brought to Miami early this morning. He's indicted with Noriega on drug charges. He faces five years and a $10,000 fine. Today, Miranda will appear before a federal magistrate. There's reportedly no deal for the Vatican to turn Manuel Noriega over to the U.S. or Panama for trial. The Roman Catholic Archbishop of Panama says Noriega will probably be given his choice of options. But the government says it's preparing murder charges against Noriega and will ask the Vatican Embassy to hand him over. The charges stem from the deaths of 10 officers who were killed during an October coup attempt. The 1980s brought a steady stream of hostage taking in the Middle East. And this morning, the first day of the 1990s, a total of 18 Western hostages, including eight Americans, remain in captivity. CNN's Patricia Ox has more. The United States ushered in the 1980s with hostages. 52 Americans held in Iran helped cause the demise of the Carter presidency. They came home as Ronald Reagan swept victorious into the White House. But the hostage crisis is likely to be a 1990s phenomenon, too. The Bush administration has already had its share of frustration. Eight Americans spent yet another New Year's in captivity in Lebanon. Terry Anderson, correspondent for the Associated Press, seized in March 1985, is the longest-held Westerner. He doesn't know that he has a little girl, that his father and brother have died, that democracy has come to Eastern Europe. His sister, Peggy Say, has worked for his release. Whose heart does not flutter when the telephone rings at odd hours, hoping that this will be the call, the one that brings her a moment of joy. The absence of news has brought yet another tormented holiday season for hostages' families. Say says she and the families of the other hostages are facing 1990 empty-handed and empty-hearted. But then again, the ebb and flow of hopes with little relief has characterized the taking of hostages. David Jacobson, Reverend Benjamin Weir, and Reverend Lawrence Jenko were released in 1985, but their release was tempered by the revelation of a secret arms for hostages deal by the Reagan administration that violated stated U.S. policy. The release of French and West German hostages caused elation. But the deaths of William Buckley in 1985, Peter Kilborn in 1986, and of Colonel William Higgins, thought to have died in 1989, brought new sadness and anger. The death in June of Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini had President Bush holding out cautious optimism. Now we see a new leader uh, coming in, and we hear different, different uh, signals coming out of Iran. Uh, some in the old mode, and then some that offer more hope. And so... I will just leave, leave it stand that a, a clear and good signal would be the release of American hostages. But that was August, and still 18 Westerners, including eight Americans, remain in captivity. To their families and their friends, they are more than blurred photographs showing stubbled faces. They are Terry Anderson, Thomas Sutherland, Frank Reed, Joseph Sicipio, Edward Tracy, Robert Polhill, 
Alan Steen, and Jesse Turner. Patricia Ox, CNN, Washington. And still to come, we'll look back at the events that shaped our lives. And they're waiting it out. Next, we'll show you why all these people aren't at home for the New Year's. Century Village and Pembroke Pines. Century Village ahead of its time. More than a place to retire. Century Village has a brand new beat. The people are talk about on the streets where the magic lifestyle is out of sight. From early in the morning to late at night. Century Village is definitely for the young at heart. And we love it. Century Village of Pembroke Pines. Pines Boulevard, west of Flamingo Road. From intimate weddings with 50 guests to a sit-down dinner for 1400 the Waterford Banquet Center at Crystal Lake Country Club is always a command performance. If you took the best home fashions from Macy's, Burdines, and Modern Age, that's the kind of holiday clearance savings you'll find all day New Year's Day at Feller's. Save up to 70% on furniture, gifts, housewares, and more. Holiday clearance savings all day New Year's Day at Feller's on Powerline Road and the all-new Feller's on University Drive in Davie. Everything imaginable for your home. Open New Year's Day. Why do we enjoy Alpine Lace low cholesterol and lower in sodium cheeses? Because they're so delicious. And we take care of ourselves. Take care of yourself. Delicious Alpine Lace low cholesterol and lower in sodium cheeses. Arsenio, he's got your number. Don't touch that dial, because every Tuesday and Friday night, you can get your Fantasy Five numbers right here. Fantasy Five and Arsenio Hall. What a concept. It's 8.51. Let's go back to Tom Burst quickly for our forecast for the first five days of 1990. Tom? <laughs> okay. We're at 69 right now. We're going to see a front move through the area today. Key West right now. We're looking at 69 degrees also. Next five days, slight chance of a shower today and tomorrow. A lot of clouds moving in tonight and tomorrow. We're going to be back to variably cloudy on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Look for about 81 today. 73 tomorrow. It's going to drop. Look for the upper 70s Wednesday, around 80 on Thursday and Friday. Staying in the 60s overnight. So the forecast really not looking all that bad. Baron? Okay, we can't complain. Thanks so much, Tom. In Pasadena, California this morning, there are lots of people sleeping beside the road only because they want to. They're camped out along the route of this morning's Tournament of Roses parade. CNN's Patty Panici has a preview. More than a half million people are expected to gather in Pasadena, California to watch the 101st Tournament of Roses parade. The parade is scheduled to get underway at 8 a.m. Pacific time, but already people are lining the streets in anticipation. Hey. In keeping with the Pasadena tradition of camping out along the parade route, many come early to get good vantage points. We've been here since last night. So this will be like two days that we're here. We watch it on TV and we just say, oh gosh, can't we do that one year? So we said, yeah, let's do it. For those who don't like to camp, motorhomes have become a comfortable alternative. More than 22 bands are practicing for the five and a half mile march along the parade route. This year's parade theme is a world of harmony. Thousands of volunteers are planning to stay up all night to ready the floats. Each float will average 100,000 flowers and 1 million petals. Work, work, work. We can't use artificial ones. It has to be all natural. We're getting picked up at 2 o'clock in the morning to start getting ready. So I'll probably be kind of tired, but I think I'll be so amped up about the parade that I'll do okay. This year's Grand Marshal is Senator John Glenn. The parade route will be lined with bleachers for those who wish to pay for seats, but ticket sales are off to a slow start this year. I don't know if the, the earthquake had anything to do with it. We heard from back east that it possibly had a little bit to do with it. People were afraid. I don't think Californians are afraid. But ticket sellers predict all 100,000 seats will be sold before the new year. Patty Panicia for CNN, Pasadena, California. 
Well, this morning, as we here at Channel 7 begin a new year, we want to thank you. It's been 12 months of change for us and for the better. And as many of you know, we switched affiliations last January to Fox and CNN. And this is an anniversary for us, one filled with success for today in Florida, thanks to you. So we leave you with one last look at 1989, a year of change for South Florida, the nation, and the world. We wish you the happiest of New Year's. Have a great day. Bye-bye. My fellow Americans, this is the 34th time I'll speak to you from the Oval Office and the last. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. If I made a Oh, boy, how many? What that flag embodies is too sacred to be abused. chance of something altogether new and the controversy that it may not work. Oh no, it's baseball. Mr. Rose has accepted baseball's ultimate sanction. Uh, I do not bet on baseball. Thank God, this dream came true. I just hope people can appreciate uh, how well I played and uh, how long I did it. Chris Everett leaves with relief rather than regret. Well, I guess this is it. Oh, we had one hell of a run, didn't we, partner? Bye. 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 Alas, poor Yarek. What's going to happen to us? Well, we can't just vanish into thin air. That's all, folks.